Coming at you from CSB Studio C in Atlanta, Georgia, the Beer Battered Sports Network presents MMA Mayhem, where MMA matters the most with Brad Storm. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. And George, the MMA Encyclopedia Kinnebrew. I'm going to do my thing, and when I do my thing, my thing will be done. To give you the lowdown on the world of mixed martial arts, it's MMA Mayhem. On the BBSN.com. What's going on, MMA fans? This is another exciting episode of MMA Mayhem. This is episode 33. And of course, you know who I am. I am the MMA Encyclopedia, George Kinnebrew. Don't ask me how I know because I just know. And I have a special co host with me today. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a fighter in the house and a guy who I can say has become a really good friend of mine in the mixed martial arts world. And I'm sporting his T-shirt today, Born to Bang. Shout out to my boy Houston Murphy and the whole Born to Bang family. But who I got over here on my left side is none other than the man himself, Jake the Snake Pruitt. JP, what's going on? Can you feel me? I can feel you, man. I can feel you. Can you feel me? Yes, I can feel you. Really? Really? No, no, not like I, that. I can't. I can. Pause. <laughs> Pause. No, I no, mean, no. <laughs> no, man. no, no. Man. It's no. great to be back here with you, George. I loved it last time. It's great. It's a fun time, and let's get it rolling. Let's get it rolling. Okay, first, what we're going to talk about. UFC 152, it went down this past Saturday night. Um, it was, it, in my opinion, I think it was an awesome night of fights. Um, you know, we, we saw some, um, some really good action. Uh, we saw uh, some knockouts. Uh, you know, we've seen some, uh, I guess what people would say, some competitive decisions. And, you know, one guy almost got his arm broke and, you know, almost uh, lost something that was near and dear to his heart. But, Jake, I wanted to get your thoughts on what you thought of UFC 152. UFC 152. I went, I watched it. I loved it. I cried, you know. Wow. Yeah. I was very, you know, disheartened. I wanted I wanted Brian Stan to win because we all know my feelings on... Uh, Bisbing, yeah. <laughs> what, what, uh, what's, what's his name again? Bisbing. Bisbitch? Oh! <laughs> Is that his name now? Bisbitch. Yeah. Okay. Bisbitch. The Biz- Count. Okay. The Count, his quivering, whining lip. Right, right. He, and I just he don't almost, like him. He almost got that lip shut. I know. By, by that right hand of Brian Stans. He almost got that lip shut. I know. Actually, I'm kind of happy that, you know, there's talks of him getting the next shot at Anderson Silva. Oh, yeah. That way, afterwards, I can take the fight footage from that and the uh-huh. fight footage from Henderson and play the knockout side by side to see who makes him make an uglier face when he gets knocked out. <laughs> Plain and simple. Didn't you say last time when, when, when you were on here, you made some kind of analogy that he was going, what'd you say? A, B, C, D. He is ass or something. You said this. What did you say? Say that. Say that line again. A B C his ass on the ground. Yeah, A B C C your ass. He got A B C your ass on the ground. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if he gets in the ring with Silva, that's gonna happen to him, right? That yeah, pretty much. I mean, he can only run so long. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it. Anderson, he just stalks you. Yeah. He finds the range. He sits there and he draws you in with his little dance. He knows the range. He knows the timing. By the time you decide to lunge in there, you're you're sleeping. Yeah, you're waking up. You're looking at the ref, going, "Hey." <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, Mike, Michael Bisbing has has come out and said, you know, he, he's pretty confident that um he could take the belt from Silva. I know a lot of people would probably think he's on some type of medication for saying that, but you know, I mean, that's how confident he feels. It, it's all right to be confident, but if he thinks he can take the belt from Silva, um. He's going to take it bent over and get his ass beat with it. <laughs> he's going to take it buckle first across the head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you saying so you say he's going to have to take it. So you say he's going to have to take it right in the patootie. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, he's it's, it's, I'm going to love that. I'm be sitting there. I'm going to be counting down. I'm be like 3, 2, 1. Knock his ass out. Get him. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll get very animated. I'll, oh yeah, I'll no, we forward. love that, man. We love that. Now, I, mean, I want to get your, I want to get your thoughts on um, the Cub Swanson Charles ooh, Oliveira fight. Ooh, <laughs> has he fell down yet? I don't, I don't know. I don't man. know. I don't know. Man. I, I just know that 
his mind he, he had an out of body experience. Yeah, he did. That the uh, he got his mind knocked out of his body, then his body decided to fall down and try to find it later. Yeah. I saw it. I saw him back off. I'm like, all right, that was a nice. Oh, he fell down. Yeah. I was like, he's like, what? I didn't know what he was doing at first. I thought he was like hesitating about to go for like a flying knee or something. And then he just dropped. I'm like, oh, snap. Like, I was, yeah. He that got was, clocked. That, 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 that was an ugly knockout. That it, was, I mean, it's not like he hit and he just dropped and fell. It's like, oh, he got knocked out. He got hit and he, he just, you know, everything shut down. And then it was like, okay, let me lay down. Yeah. You know. And you know, I've been trying to tell people for the longest that Cub Swanson is for real, but nobody wanted to listen to me. I told people, I was like, everybody was basing his career off of when he got completely blitzed by Jose Aldo in like, what, two seconds with that double flying knee? And I was like, all right, he'll recover from this. And I bet when he comes to the UFC, he's going to be a lot better than what people think he is. And I've been right. I said it in the George Root fight. I said it in the Ross Pearson fight. And I knew he was going to win this fight because I was saying that um, as I was, you know, looking at the marquee of the fight, I was like, okay, Charles Oliveira is going to win this fight two ways. Either if he submits him or either if he comes out like a house of fire. And I knew he was going to do that. And I knew Swanson was going to be more technical and more precise. And he was going to catch him. Pretty much it. Pretty much. I did enjoy that fight, especially the ending. It yep. was a very active, very entertaining fight. Yep. And, uh, of course, Demetrius Johnson... You know, became the first ever flyweight champion. Congratulations. History was made. That you know? fight did not go the way I thought it would. I'm pretty sure. I'm I pretty thought, sure. I, I, I thought the first two rounds, it would be very close. Yeah. I thought after the third and into the fourth and into the fifth that Benavides would just overtake him. Yeah. Be able to, you know, slow that energy down mm -hmm. and, you know, use a little more of the power. But, no. Yeah. It went the other way. Right. And then, of course, you know, Matt Hamill's fight is really not relevant enough to oh, talk about. That was just a complete snooze fest. That was... Horrible. I mean, I, I didn't know what I was looking at. I didn't know if I was looking at a sparring session or if I was looking at a a, a, a live UFC workout or some crap like yeah, that. Yeah, it was... Yeah, that was, I was sitting there going, after the first round, after he got clocked out one time, I'm like, okay, the guy was just letting him burn himself out. He's right. going to come out the second round. No. 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 Mm -mm. I, I thought he had a game plan to let him burn himself out. Yeah. No. He's, he just he showed up to say hi to us. He really know, did. His, he really did. He was just like, oh well, you know, I was just at home sitting watching the UFC. You know, I I got tired of uh, playing with my kids and and talking to my wife about her problems, so I just come back and fight and just relieve my sorrows. But it really didn't do any. It really didn't no. do any good. No, I mean he was. I mean he was Canadian too. Wasn't he? he was one. Yeah. Of the, he, he was and one he of, looked like a tub of lard. Like, yeah, he, good he grief. did not. It, it was like he was. I don't know how long this, that one was set up, but it was like he was the hometown. Okay, we're gonna put this Canadian on the show to have him on the show. To have <laughs> yeah. another, if you notice that when they go UFC travel, especially over Europe, there's a lot more people you don't know, but mm -hmm. they're from that area. Right. You know, and it's. You know, some of them's good. I mean, you put GSB on a Canadian card, and it's good. He's good anywhere, but right. That guy, um, not, you, not on the main card. I right. mean, I could see on the FX preliminary or, or the Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. But, no. And you know what the bad thing is? You know the funny part about it is I picked him to win that fight. <laughs> That's the funny part. I, that, I picked him to, to beat Hamill. No, you, you gotta, I picked him to beat you, Hamill. Because I, I don't trust Hamill against guys that are not just plain wrestlers. I don't trust him. I don't. After seeing what happened to him, I mean, granted, it was controversial what happened between him and is what you call him, bitch sping. But, you know, uh, besides that, you know, him and um, um, Rashad Evans, him and, um, you know, it's 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 a couple it's a couple of, I, I don't know, him and John Jones. I mean, I just don't trust him against guys that are just as skilled as he is. I, I don't know. Well, but, the top level guys, no, he's, he has a tough time with him. He can hang in there with him for a while, but, you know, the guy he was up against, I mean, you don't know his name. You don't say his name. You don't know. Oh, I know him. I know his past five fights. You're like, who's this guy? Yeah. What? Like, you're like, don't, going, don't he stay down the house for me? Don't don't. You, didn't y'all see you walking outside checking the know, mail the other he, day? He's one of them guys. You go look his name up on Google. You go to like page two or page three. <laughs> you're not even page one Google. Yeah, that's, I know, that's, right? That's, that's bad. That's that's bad. That's horrible. Speaking of horrible, what about this Strike Force card, man? That got canceled. That, I was looking forward to this. That I mean, honestly, when your big main draw drops, yeah, it's like oh, there's all the steam out of it. Mm -hmm. But you know, you gotta build a card where you got more than just one fight people want to see. True. That way, you can move you know the second fight up, and it's gonna be a good main event, not as 
maybe as great as you know a title shot or something like that is good, but it's going to hang in there. But you know, I like what they did coming straight up. Say, hey, we're going to compensate the other fighters that you yeah. know got dropped because honestly, they signed a contract with those fighters to pay them to show up and fight that night. Mm-hmm. You know, and just say, oh no, after they done all the training and time and everything you put into it, you got to pay them something. True. I mean, it's. It happens everywhere. Every every level show you go to, there's something like that that happens. So, mm-hmm. but you know, there's got to be some compensation still. True, true. I just, I don't know, man. I mean, it's it's it, it seems like this has just been the year of the cancellation. I mean, like UFC UFC 151 got canceled, and now this, and then and it's like the Aldo fight got canceled too. So this has just been the year of the cancellation. I think people's egos are just getting you know so ahead of themselves that they're just like, okay, I'm gonna train my butt off. So I can, it's almost like they want to injure themselves. I mean, I know that may say, sound kind of sick, but it's like, it's almost like they want to injure themselves and be like, okay, well, you know, at least I can say I was training hard for the fight. So when I get injured, you know, they won't be like, oh, you know, he backed out and he's a punk and all this other crap, you know, it's yeah, you know, stupid. Like, hey, I trained, I was going to fight that guy, but I got hurt. Yeah. I trained hard for him, but I got hurt. You know what I mean? You know, like, yeah, uh, you know, I won't. Put everybody down because I know training accidents happen. You do get hurt when you're pushing hard. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's actually more said on the other guy that's like, no, I'm not going to fight anybody else. Yeah. You know, hey, you signed up to fight. You know, hey, fight somebody. True. Step up. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe Jones situation on 151. Hey, I'm not going to fight, you know, no, Sonnen. Right. You know, because I can honestly say Sonnen just lost to Silva. You know, why would he deserve a title shot at 2 That's no. true. You're right. No, no, don't give him a title shot. Say, hey, it's going to be a three-round. Yeah. Go at they it. They could have It's non-title. That. It's a non-title. So, guess what? You better go in there and beat him and defend your title because if you lose, guess what? It's going to turn around real close. He does get a title shot, and he's done beat you once. Mm-hmm. And so, that's going to look real bad on you. Yep. So. Okay. Well, I mean... You know, well, hopefully, hopefully we won't have to experience too much of this throughout the rest of this year. Hopefully, uh, you know, more fighters will be more cautious, you know, in their training and in their preparation. But you know, that's just uh, that's just the way that goes. But coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, on MMA Mayhem, we've got another special interview for you. We are going to be interviewing another man that will be fighting on XFC 20 this Friday night, Lorenzo the Borg. Borgamato, you are listening to MMA Mayhem on the BBSN.com and Couchfighter.co. MMA Mayhem fans, this is Brad Storm saying what's up. If you love MMA as much as you love pro wrestling, then you're going to love the WWA4. Every Thursday night, 8 o'clock bell time, a full industrial and commerce drive, you'll see the best of the WWA4 superstars, such as AR Fox, Black Baron, Skeletal, J-Bo, K-9, and many, many more. Go check us out on YouTube. Look up WWA4, subscribe, share to the world, and comment as well and you can also hit us up on our facebook at fans of wwa4 if you love pro wrestling action the wwa4 is where it's at hello folks this is john prisco president of xfc and when i want to know what's happening in mma i tune into mma mayhem and find out what's up all right welcome back mma fans to mma mayhem we got another special interview on tap we are going to be talking to none other than lorenzo the borg bargamato did i say that right kind of yeah uh, okay but uh yeah well, you, you've got a big fight coming up this friday man uh xfc 20 high octane against eric reynolds and the first thing that i wanted to know is do you feel that if you put on an impressive performance against Eric Reynolds this Friday night, do you feel like this could possibly launch you into the XFC lightweight title scene? Uh, I, I don't care about these kind of things, honestly. Other than that, my my focus is will uh, switch somewhere else. So my only concern right now is uh, Eric Reynolds. Like with uh, with experience, I learn how to focus just. Uh, a step at a time and don't look too too much at the future you know other right. than that uh, i can perform very good you know mm-hmm. yeah that's that, that's good lorenzo um as far as what we're seeing in the talks coming out it seems that you're actually being thrown in there as a say a sacrificial lamb just to set up 
the next fight form for the title shot, kind of a you know a showpiece like you're supposed to be an easy win, an easy knockout form. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, I really hope that uh, Eric feels like that, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I hope he keeps feeling like that until the fight, you know. Right, right, right. So, yeah, yeah. So that's honestly a very good position for me, and uh, uh, being such an underdog in this fight, and uh, uh, I really hope he thinks uh, the knock me out is the easy, you know. It makes my fight easier. Right, and I was as, actually... As far as uh, the promotion wants to do that, I know this as well, but I knew this when I signed the contract, and it's fine to me, you know? Being that Eric Reynolds is the number one lightweight in the XFC, do you feel like you have everything to gain and he has everything to lose? Yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like this is the best possible position for me to be in, you know? So right. I can ask for anything better. So do you do you feel like sort of that... Do you feel like you can just sit back and kind of dictate the fight somewhat because all of this pressure is really on Eric Reynolds because, you know, they're already claiming you as the underdog, so really all the pressure is on him. So do you feel like that allows you to make your game plan a lot more subtle and uh, a lot more precise going in? Yeah, I don't know if uh, if uh, he will feel a lot of pressure or whatever. I know that I have no pressure whatsoever on me. And I know that uh, I will not fight this fight. I will fight my fight no matter what. So uh, I hope he has all the pressure in the world. I, as far as me, I don't have any pressure, you know, and I'm glad to feel like that. Right. All right, Lorenzo, I just want to come in this fight, your game plan. Are you looking to keep it standing and bang him out and work through it? Are you looking to get him down, ground and pound, or what are we looking? What's the game plan on this guy? Uh, the the game plan is beating him uh, in every way possible. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I understand, you know, you, you don't want to pass up a win. You don't want to force, you know, pass the opposite. But if it comes down to you as far as where you want the fight to go, do you want it standing, do you want it on the ground, or, or do you want it up against the fence? Honestly, I would like the fight to, to be standing, you know? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that that always turns for an exciting fight and, you know, yes, it shows yes. the skills. I mean, you know, the willingness to stand there and bang instead of some guys that want to come in and they just want to turn it to a grappling match because they really don't want to get hit. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. Do you feel like Eric Reynolds is underestimating you, Lorenzo, and by beating him, do you feel like you will earn his respect? No, I really don't care about him. I really don't. I don't even know him, you know, so... Honestly, whatever he thinks, uh, uh, if it's an advantage for me in the cage, but if not, I mean, you know, uh, I don't, I don't lose my sleep about Eric Reynolds disrespect me. I can care less about his respect, you know. So honestly, you know, I, I, I don't even know what to do with his respect <laughs> if he gives me to me. So to me, respect, uh, I care about respect for from people that I care about. I really don't care about him, so, you know. Right. Yeah. All right, Lorenzo. Now, you win this fight, and you get the opportunity to stay with the XFC and have a title fight with maybe someone like Nick Newell, who's got a good hot streak going on right now. Would you be willing to stay in XFC and take that fight? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I would like to. Being that you're from Italy, I wanted to know how is the MMA popularity over there in Italy? Because we don't hear too much about uh, – Fighters coming out of Italy. So, if you could just briefly just touch on that. I mean, uh, the trend uh, all over the world is uh, MMA is growing. So it's growing slowly over there too. But uh, we have we have a long way to to reach uh, the the United States level. You know, as far as uh, uh, TV media attention and uh, people attention. You know, it's. Uh, uh, we we are a country dominated by soccer, you know. So people just care only about soccer, and uh, it's very fighting is not that popular. But UFC is getting everywhere, and this is giving exposure to MMA in general, you know. So we start seeing this in TV and stuff like that. Right. And one la one one more thing before we wrap it up here. Would you like to thank any sponsors or any people that support you? Yeah, I want to thank uh, Brawl and Mall, NA, 
NAL Performance, my sponsor, and my team, the Flexilians, and uh, you guys to every man. Okay. Me. All right, Lorenzo, we'll be pulling for you. Yeah, yes, Thank we will. Guys. I, I like the underdog. I like being the underdog. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I hope you go in there and shut him up. <laughs> Plain and simple. Thank you, guys. I, w- I wish you a good fight. Yeah, man. We will. And, and I hope the weight cut's going really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's going amazing. I, that that that's good. I know that that can suck. Yeah, but we yeah, we, yeah. we certainly appreciate you uh, being on the show with us today, Lorenzo. Again, like Jake just echoed, you know, we wish you uh, uh, all the best in your fight uh, this Friday night. We hope things turn out well for you, and we would love to have you back on the show in the near future. Anytime, guys. Coming up next on MM Mayhem, we got my main man, George, sitting down with a solo shot to interview Chris Coggins. Coming up on the XFC 20 card right here on MM Mayhem at the BBSN.com, couchfighter.co. Coming at you right at your house, in your face, slap! Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. The majority of victims know their attacker. It could be your friend, your neighbor, or someone you met at a party. If you said no, it's rape, and it's a crime. This is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline today at 1-800-656-HOPE or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. Hey guys, I'm Sarah, the KO Kid Malloy, fighting for Extreme Fighting Championship. And when you want your MMA news or myself, tune in to MMA Mayhem. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to MMA Mayhem. We have got a very special interview for you on tap. We are going to be talking to Chris Coggins of the XFC, who will be fighting this Friday night on XFC 20 High Octane. Chris, how you doing this afternoon, man? I'm good. How y'all doing? Doing great. Doing great. Um, First thing I want to know is, does the fact that Scott Holtzman, your opponent, uh, this upcoming Friday is undefeated in XFC. Does that motivate you? Does that motivate you more for this fight and motivate you more to want to beat him? Uh, not really, because of the people he's fought. If he had just beat two really good people, then I'd be a little more, a little more uh, intimidated, I guess. But uh, I guess uh, him being undefeated, you know, everyone else thinks he's gonna, you know, run right through me. So I guess that in itself makes me motivated a lot more, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so so basically what you're saying is you're not intimidated by the reputation of Holtzman. You're just focused on what you got to do, and you're going to go in there and take care of business. Yes, sir. I'm not intimidated by anybody. I'm a fighter. You know, we, I'll fight anybody that they put in front of me, I guess, pretty much. There you go. That's the spirit. Now, I want to get into Scott Holtzman's skill set here. Now, we know that Scott Holtzman is a fairly well-rounded fighter, and I to know that being that he's so well-rounded, how do you go about strategizing and, and game planning for uh, Hot Sauce? Uh, the biggest thing the biggest thing in this training camp was uh, a big size thing. He is a really big, explosive guy. So, uh, I, you know, I work a lot of my strength and conditioning uh, as far as uh, being able to, you know, being able to handle a bigger person without getting tired still. That was uh, definitely one strategy I had to, in it and uh, obviously I've you know my conditioning has been up tenfold you know I'm in great shape I didn't have to cut a lot of weight okay um, so good to go okay no where it goes good good I also wanted to know that you know man it's, it's a lot of people out here counting you out man I don't understand that like I've looked at your resume and it's very impressive like I don't understand why people would label you as the underdog just because this guy is just know and all that stuff but i want to know is that affecting you is is that having any effect on how you going into this fight knowing that you know i guess technically your back is up against the wall so to speak as far as like the critics and stuff is concerned i mean that's what brings the best out of it saying it when our backs against the wall right yeah i mean i'm i'm completely comfortable with the fact man Uh, the fact that everyone thinks he's gonna run right through me is gonna make it so much sweeter when it doesn't happen (laughs) i hear that man Now, I want to get into a a real, I guess, personal question here. I I, I heard that you had made some comments recently about his uh, fan base, and I wanted to know what was the motive behind that. Are you doing that just to kind of get into his head, or or do you really just despise him and his fan base that much? 
it wasn't so much me as much as some of my teammates and stuff as far as talking about his fans. So you're talking about the little red guys that run around with him and stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, man. It's just that I don't really understand it. You know, I, just, I mean, it doesn't really have anything to do with hot sauce or anything like that. They're just little red dudes that run around. But, I mean, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what to say about it, to be honest. <laughs> wow. I'd be embarrassed myself. I mean, if it hypes them up, you know, that's, that's fine. That, that's Everyone's going to do something. That's a real bold move to call them a period stain, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that definitely wasn't me, but it was funny though. Are, are you are you gonna be surprised if uh, Scott Holtzman doesn't want to touch gloves when the referee brings you to in the center of the cage? I didn't want to touch gloves anyway. Oh, okay. It's, it's I don't expect him to like me very much. Yeah, he, he pretty much thinks I'm just trash talking him to talk him down, and really, I'm just you know, a fight's a fight. We're making a fight. We're making a show. We're both professionals. We're gonna get in there and do what we do. You know, whatever we say about each other now isn't gonna mean anything. When we actually get in there. Okay, because <laughs> I was thinking, like, maybe if he came out, you know, he was going to try to, like, blitz you or something or, or you know, just, just try to get over aggressive and just come after you. But I'm guessing at the same time, if he did that, that would work out in your favor, right? Uh, of course. You know, I mean, uh, a lot of people have done that throughout the, you know, throughout the years doing it. BJ Penn's a big guy as far as getting in their opponent's heads and making them mad. When, when you go into a fight with a lot of emotion, you know, you're more likely to make mistakes. You know, hopefully I'll be able to capitalize on this. Okay, so where do you feel, let me ask you, where do you feel that you have the advantage in this fight? Because, you know, like we just touched on just a few minutes ago, we know he's well-rounded. Where do you have the, where do you feel like you have the edge? Well, I'm pretty well-rounded myself, you know, I figure I've, uh, I've been training hard, you know, no matter where it goes, I'll be prepared, whether it be standing, grappling, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't think he'll have a huge advantage over me anyway. Okay, and one one last one last thing I wanted to know is that um, if you win, well, actually, I have one more question after this. But um, first thing I wanted to know is that if you win, like impressively, can we expect you to kind of do some sort of gesture to him or his fan base <laughs> since you were, you know, since, since you took a shot at him or whatnot? You know, can we expect you to do any kind of victory taunt? I always do some kind of victory time. <laughs> you know, you always everyone gets hyped up when they win, especially if it's impressive and it's a finish. Uh, you know, I at least expect to get hyped up, and you know what I mean. Especially because you know, like you said yourself, you know, everyone is really counting me out. They think I'm the underdog. I'm more frustrated with the critics that are saying those things than I am with hot sauce and so. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully, hopefully, we'll be in store for an awesome fight uh, this Friday night. Um, one oh, last. You will be for sure. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. You th do you think um do you think y'all y'all get fight of the night? I mean, I just want to know. Like, do you think this will be a, this is a potential to be fight of the night? If it goes three rounds, it'll be fight of the night because I know he's coming to fight. I'm coming to fight for sure. You know, I'm in shape. I'm ready to do this, man. Fifteen minutes ain't shit compared to what I've been doing the past four, you know, months. So. Okay. Cool. Cool. I'm ready to go. Right. One last thing I want to know is, um, would you like to thank any sponsors or any of your people out there before we wrap this up? Uh, yeah, I definitely like to thank my sponsors. I would, I'd like to first of all thank my gym, uh, SSS, you know, my other, my strength and condition, uh, conditioning gym, Circuit Athletics, my chiropractor, Hillcrest Chiropractic, Damage Control Mouth Guard, and, uh, and that's about it. Okay. Ripper fight gear. I thought I forgot about that one. My Ripper fight gear. They they made my my gear for coming into this fight. I really am thankful for that. Okay, great. Well, we have certainly enjoyed talking to you, Mr. Coggins. We wish you all the best this Friday night. We're hoping for a great fight, and we hope to have you back on in the near future. All right, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And uh, you know, you'll see a war for sure Friday. I promise. Coming up next on MMA Mayhem, we will be wrapping up the show talking about XFC 20 as well as what's going on in the week of MMA. You are listening to MMA Mayhem on VBBSN.com and CouchFighter.co. Okay, astronaut, you're up. You'll be meeting with Wish Kid Brandon. His wish is to see a space shuttle launch. All systems go. This year, more than 27,000 children will be diagnosed with a life-threatening medical condition. The Make-A-Wish Foundation can give them hope that will lift their spirits in these trying times. And, Cowboy, you'll be meeting with Shayla at a dude ranch in San Antonio. Let's saddle up. Their wishes are waiting to come true. 
you can help make my wish happen. Visit wish.org today. Hi, this is Shannon Erke, Maxim cover model and ring girl, and you're listening to MMA Mayhem on BBBSN.com. Are you ready for a change? A change is gonna do you good. Are you ready for a time? MMA fans, welcome back. We are going to be wrapping up the show talking about XFC 20 High Octane coming at you this Friday night only on Access TV. So you better be tuned in. As of course, you know, I got my co-host in crime with me today, as a former colleague would say. I didn't uh, do it. Jake the Snake Pruitt. No, it? it is not Jake Roberts. No. This is Jake Pruitt. So don't get it twisted. Or he might give you a butt whipping. Ain't that right, Jay? Hey, I lay this mic down, and I got all my hair still. <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. I, do I hear? Wait a minute. Did, Jake, do you hear that? Did, I think I hear a storm hold coming. On, hold on. Coming through the uh, line. Wait coming, a minute. I, I, Is there a storm coming? Do I? Am I getting a forecast out there in Chambly that we got a storm? Do I hear a storm on the line? Yeah, we got a phone call oh, coming in from Brad. Brad, how you doing? Oh, is that Brad Storm? Yeah, that's right. When it rains, it pours, guys. And you know what? I'm pouring down with some injury pain right now. Gosh. Uh, seems uh, the diagnosis for uh, this week is a fractured rib. So oh. if anybody wants to say that wrestling is not real, uh, think again, man. Because uh, it's real as it gets. And uh, messing around in the ring, not a good idea for the storm. Yeah. But but you're a survivor, Brad. You you're a trooper. You 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 mustered up the courage to still make it on MMA Mayhem, and we salute that, man. Of course, of hey, course, hey, of course. You're pulling through, and you're soldiering on. That's all you can do. Yeah, you know, and I want to talk. You know, with Kevin Ferrand and uh, Joe Elmore. You know, when uh, the incident went down with Elmore and his uh, rib popping uh, out of a uh, place or whatever. Uh, I got to give him a lot of props, right. man. He finished that fight out and uh, went went the distance, and it, it's a it's a tough injury, man. Because anything you do, uh, twisting motions, any laughing, coughing, it doesn't matter what goes on, uh, you're still feeling the pain. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you, Brad. I've had bruised ribs, separated cartilage before from a knee, and if you've never had a rib injury, you don't know the pain. There's nothing you can do that doesn't hurt. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean I, having a I, conversation I, is painful. <laughs> how the hell do you get through a fight like that, though? That's what, that's my question, man. How, how do you pull through a fight when you got uh, uh, an injury that severe and uh, you're getting pounded on it? What goes through your mind? That go through your own mind. Uh, that's just true grit, toughness, and heart, and want to be there and want to win. That's it. That's that. That's Remember. pulling through. That's you know being there for more than a paycheck. Yeah. That's being there to get the W and to make it. And, and you know that, and ripping off a DDT at the end, huh? Hey, if anything works, that's it. And hey. and you know, speaking speaking of guys that want to win and and want to want to earn their uh, their keep in their organization, we have got an action packed card for you all this Friday night. XFC twenty high octane. It's finally here. We've been waiting for it the past few days, so it's finally going down. So, gentlemen, if we could, let's go ahead and get down into this card. First fight that I want to get to is Nate Landwer versus Chris Wright, the opening bout. Now I know there's a lot of uh thing, uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, uh commotion going around about uh Mr. Landwer's uh, hairdo. People are saying that um you know he looks like you know half alien, half human, you know hey, that type hey, of stuff. Look, Dark Alley, Predator, Predator, <laughs> with the mask. I mean he's the mean. He looks like a mean. I got to go with the hair. Look. D- d- that's very intimidating hair. So, are you going with Nate Landwer? I'm gonna Chris? go Nate. I'm going Nate. I gotta, I gotta pull for the hair on that one. I haven't seen these two guys, but the hair, I, I gotta go with the hair. How, how do you think he's gonna take care of uh, Chris right here? What? Do, how could you see the fight ending? I mean, it's. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna be TKO strikes. TKO, TKO. Stri- second okay. round, second round. Brad Storm, what, what is your opinion on this? Uh, 145 featherweight fight. Uh, you know these guys are going to be fast and furious. Nate the train, uh, Land Weir. You know, again, the hair, but you know, like in Tufts the past previous week, somebody was talking about hair. It doesn't really matter about what your hair looks like. This is not a fashion show. And I think Chris Wright is going to be there. He's ready to rumble. He's going to be quicker than Land Weir is going to be to the punch. I think it's going to be a TKO third round. That's what's up. Okay, Jake, I want to shoot it back to you. Anthony Lemon, Drew Kennedy, who you got? 
That is going to be a close one. I see that one going all three rounds. I'm going to see split decision going to Kennedy. Wow. He said split decision. Now, split Brad. Split decision, Kennedy. Okay. It's going to be a good fight. Be a good fight. Second round will be slow. First round, it's going to be nice and explosive. Second round, slow. Third round, they're both going to push it out. But I see Kennedy pulling it out. Okay. Now, Brad, we've already got your predictions on this fight. But I just want to know overall, you know, how do you feel the uh, – the flow of this fight is going to go. Uh, I think it's going to be a slugfest. Fest. Both of these guys like to bang. Both like to exchange punches. And uh, the beast and the hammer, they're not called the beast and the hammer for nothing. They're not, these guys are not going to be uh, pulling out some jiu-jitsu moves and trying to seal the deal with the submission, I don't think. I think they're going to be going out and uh, it's going to be fist of fury. And one of them is going to get knocked out. So, uh, you know, only time will tell. And uh, I'm looking forward to that 170. Uh, pound welterweight fight. Okay, cool. So let's go on to Cornelius Godfrey and Shaw uh, Bobbins Babonis. Babonis. Who? What did you say, Brad? Babonis. Okay, Babonis. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Babonis. But um, well, how do you how do you see what what are your what are your feelings on on the flow of this fight, uh, Brad? And then I want to get your predictions after that, Jake. But first, Brad, I want to ask you. What are your feelings on the um, on how do you think this fight, you know, just the overall excitement of the whole thing? Well, you know, both of these guys are coming in at 135, uh, you know, bantamweight contest. Once again, like with the featherweights, this is going to be a fast and furious battle. But I've heard a lot of good things from Shaw Babonis' camp. I heard a lot of, uh, he's getting promoted very well, and there's a, I guess there's a lot of talk, and I guess there's going to be a lot of pressure on him to uh, withstand Cornelius Godfrey in the cage. But, you know, I'm going with the hype, and I'm going to go with Shaw. I don't know too much about these guys, but I'm looking forward to seeing them fight and uh, learning a little bit more. But I'm going to give my hats off to Babonis because he's, I guess, the better uh, promoter uh, as far as his name goes right now. Okay. And, Jake? I, I mean, they're 135ers. I mean, it's going to be like the Energizer Bunnies on Cracking there. I mean, I mean, they're going to be going. It's going to be an exciting. It's going to be a wild fight. They're going to be bouncing off the cage left and right. Um. Yeah, but Bonus has got a lot of hype going. But I think Godfrey is just going to stay chill, stay lax, and he's going to come in there and get the work done. He's not worrying about pumping it up because he knows he's there to work and he's going to win. And how do you see that coming out? I see the third three-round decision on that one. I mean, there, there, it's it's going to be tight, but three-round, it's going to be decision. Godfrey. Okay, cool, cool. And then we have a fight that I'm personally looking forward to, Chris Dunn. Versus Joby Sanchez, Brad. What is what? What are your thoughts? Uh, we, we talked about this last week, uh, MMA Encyclopedia. You know, Joby Sanchez. Uh, he's the winner of the uh, you know the the free for all get in uh, improve your worth fighting contest. So XFC decided that Joby is the winner. He proved himself, but a lot of pressure might be on Joby to perform here in the 135 weight class division. Uh, Chris Dunn. I think uh, he might get the upset in this one. Um, I'm going with Chris Dunn, my friend. Okay. Jake? I mean, that's, yeah. It, it just you put it on paper and everything. I mean, I mean Sanchez, he, 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 he looks like your winner. Dunn is scrappy. I think he's going to pull it out. Uh, second round submission. Okay. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. And then we got the ladies going at it. Brad, what do you think about the ladies? Sarah oh, Bagger dies. Okay. Sophia Malloy. I mean, Sarah Malloy. I'm sorry. The KO Kid versus The Secret. And you got to wonder if The Secret <laughs> is ready, if she is ready to redeem herself after the loss at Invicta Fight Championships won. The KO Kid won her fight in that uh, event as well. And uh, we talked about the layoff between 2008 and now for The Secret, and I don't know if that's going to uh, creep up on her. I think it's going to be a hard-fought contest. I think somebody's going to get submitted, and I think KO Kid's going to do it because uh, she gets she uh, always figures out a way to not knock out her opponent but to submit him, and I think it's going to happen in the second round. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just calling. I'm just going to watch this one. <laughs> I, I'm just going to sit back and, and, and watch this one. I don't want to. I don't want to try to predict that one with George. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm pleading on that one. Okay, I, I, he said he I don't want to touch that one. 
He pleads the fifth. I'm going to go with Sarah fifth, Bagadai oh. on that one. I'm going to go with the secret on that, and I think she's going to be able to submit Malloy. Okay, a very highly anticipated bout. Co-main event, Chris Coggins, Scott Holtzman. Chris Coggins has come out and laid down the gauntlet about the fan base. Will that get to Scott Holtzman's head? Jake Pruitt. Um, if anything, I think it's going to get him a little more fired up to go in there and get to work early on. I think this one's going to go fireworks, big bang, boom, first round, done. Holtzman. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and Brad, your thoughts? Yeah, Jake, uh, I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. Mr. Prisco, the president of the F- XFC, was very high on Holtzman, also high on Coggin, but Coggin's saying that uh, he might be all, all hype. Well, we're gonna about to find out, and I think it's going to find out an explosion. Uh, coming up on XFC 20, Holtzman's going to get the knockout first round. Okay. And, of course, the main event, the one that everybody wants to see, Lorenzo the Borg versus Eric Reynolds. They've been counting Lorenzo out. Brad, do you think he will overcome Lorenzo? Uh, I really, uh, you know, Reynolds, is a, he's a powerful being. And uh, Lorenzo, he's going to have a lot of tricks up his sleeve. Uh, a lot of talk's been, like you said, MMA Encyclopedia, a lot of talk about Lorenzo. I think he gets the job done. I think he submits Eric Reynolds third round. All right. And, of course, Snake, how do you feel? I feel this is second round submission. Lorenzo. Oh, there it is. Yeah, All right. Plain and simple. First round, he's going to come up, standing, bang, and work. Second round, he's going to come out, and he's going to take it right down and get submission. All right. Well, that settles it, ladies and gentlemen. That has been your predictions for XFC 20 High Octane. Uh, That should be an explosive, action-packed card. And we know that John Prisco will look for nothing (laughs) but the best because that's what John Prisco does. Now, going on, I know, Jake, you you, you felt really um, passionate about this, this topic about John Jones and his injury that he suffered at oh, UFC yeah, 152. I was, that, I was watching. I thought it was going to snap. I thought we was going to have another uh, Tim Sylvia. Frank Mir. Frank yeah. Mir. But, you know, he didn't get that on the forearm. But Belfort was trying to rip it off. Yeah. Uh, he was trying to rip it off. And he about succeeded from what I hear. He from, did, yeah. From, from uh, you know, post-fight, you know, examinations, everything. You know, Jones has got a little suspension on his hands. Mm-hmm. You know, it's they, they say indefinite. That just means till he gets... All his medical clearance, right? You know, it's yep. it's he's got to make sure they're gonna he's gonna be okay before they clear him again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rumor so, has it the rumor mill is stating that he might only fight once next year, and it might well once uh, up till the summertime, and it might his first fight might not be till June. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, depending on the extent of the injuries, yeah, I mean it's. Yeah. I mean, with him at his level with the title, yeah, there may be an interim in there. He may be all laid off so long because he's not going to rush back and damage that arm anymore. You know, yeah. For, well, yeah, you know he, he showed a lot of heart through that fight. And, uh, you know, it's one thing, yeah, he could have tapped and saved himself some injury and had a rematch, but he wants to be the best of the best, and he needs to keep that gold around his waist. And he did so. Uh, you know, hats off to him, man. He's a beast. Yeah, yeah he is a beast. And... and the, the rumor mill also has it that the other beast in that one came in with a broken hand, which completely changed the way Belfort fought. The, what you thought you was going to see Victor Belfort come in there and do. But what do you think it about that storm? Me, uh, you know, Belfort impressed me. He, 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 he pulled out more submissions than I ever thought he was going to try. I mean, he's, and, a, he's uh, a Gracie you know, black belt. What do you round, think? Man, you were like, oh, my God, this, this might happen. This might the Rocky Balboa might come true here. So. Well, I wouldn't say that's quite a Rocky Balboa with Belfort. I mean, he's well, the, he, 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 he tore Belfort. He was the phenom. He was when he first came out. He was supposed to be the end all, be all. You know, next great, best did everything. Did you look at the Vegas numbers on that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were they were pretty. They were pretty. Uh, they they came down pretty hard on Belfort. But one thing I wanted to point out about Belfort here, gentlemen is that he suffered a severe eyebrow laceration because we saw after that near upset, that near shock uh, uh, that would have been heard around the world, John Jones regained his composure, and he turned Vitor Belfort's eyebrow into Swiss cheese, courtesy of his sharp, lanky elbow. I mean, that's oh, yeah. that's going to happen to pretty much everyone Jones fights. When they go to the ground, he gets on top. He's going to slice, he's gonna slice them gonna up with elbows. They're going to be able to equal that out if they, if they have the same reach, if they're like long and lanky, and they, they, they look similar. 
you know, uh, and, and Snake, I, I agree with you. I don't think he, he's a Rocky Balboa either, but that's just the way the numbers predicted it out in Vegas. And I don't well, I mean, Vegas, they're, just, they're seeing Belfort as, you know, they're, they're looking at his age thinking he's, you know, done. He's somewhat of a name, but he's not done. I don't think the Phenom is going to be done for a while. He's going to be back, and I think he may get another shot at Jones once Jones is healed up. Okay, so that's a bold prediction from the snake. And yeah. going on, what'd you say, Brad? It would be really, hey, uh, what would be really nice, even though these two guys aren't going to hang, uh, tangle. Uh, Rashad Evans was in his corner, corner, Belfort's corner. It would be nice to see if uh, both of those guys could uh, get into the octagon together and bang it out, but I don't think that's going to happen. No. And uh, going on real quick, we also had some other injuries. Uh, Joseph Benavidez has suffered an eyebrow laceration. Uh, Roger Hollett. Uh, suspended indefinitely, had to see a physician about his left hand. Charles Oliveira got his lights dimmed by Cub Swanson, which I predicted. He's suspended indefinitely. Uh, Ibra, Igor Pekryak, uh for precautionary reasons, we'll, I'm sure, learn more about that later on. Evan Dunham got suspended 60 days for a forehead laceration. Lance Benoist got a forehead laceration as well. And Simon Thorsten, whoever that may be, um, sorry, uh, got suspended indefinitely, uh, had to see a physician. So, and also, Charlie Brenneman also got suspended and had to have an MRI. So, I mean, this these guys took a beating at this at this um, you know, this card this this Saturday, man. It was brutal. I mean, it was a really had a lot of knockouts and you know, a, a lot of cuts. But you know, you're gonna have that standard. You know, get an MRI. They're gonna make sure the fighters are okay before they let us go in there and beat ourselves down again. So, right. You know, all that's just precautionary. It's not as bad as it seems, but you got to do it. That's it. Well, yeah, Brad Storm. I think they realize too. I think they realize too that that you know, if Bones Jones is on the card, everybody's gonna be watching. True. Yeah. Well, Brad Storm, we do want to thank you for coming on with us here today. Before we get out of here, we want to thank our sponsors, Glacius. Yeah, real quick, real quick, George. Uh, my buddy Jason bought in steel with uh, in a car wreck, a pretty bad one. Uh, got a steel rock foot in his right, uh, I believe his right leg, and tore his ACL on his left. Uh, there's a donation fund on our Beer Batter Sports Network page. Uh, if you guys would check it out, uh, you know, if you, anybody out there can donate some money to a friend of mine uh, that's really down on his luck right now and needs to get back on his feet, that would be much appreciated. And we will definitely inform our listeners about that. We want to thank our affiliates before we get out of here. We want to thank Glacius. You can follow them on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash Glacius, G-A, Twitter.com, uh, uh, the, at the official Glacius. Uh, Reverb Nation, www.reverbnation.com. That's the Glacius official uh, site on there. Uh, SouthernMMA.org. Of course, the XFC, American Top Team, Gwinnett and Atlanta. Born to Bang, Athletics, Houston Murphy, what's up? Conflict MMA, Jared Williams, what's up? Goodbye, LA. You're doing your thing, Sam Fish. I see you. Mr. 217, thank you for the tunes. Collapse of the Empire, pinups for soldiers. Couchfighter.co had a great conversation with Michael Browning yesterday. WWA4 is always where it's at. Brad Storm will tell you that. Headlocks and headshots. Uh, Harold J. Taylor, we thank you for coming on the show. MMARecruiter.com, what's going on? Miss Molly, I will certainly get on the video conference whenever I can. And Bobby Whip at ReverbNation.com slash BigRob1989. Jake, is there anything else that you want to say before we get out of here? Before we get out of there, I'm just saying at any time and any point, for the right amount, I'm ready to whoop a man's ass. There it is. And, yeah. and there it is. Brad, anything you want to say before we wrap up here? No, I just want to say uh, thanks to all the fans and thanks to uh, Jake the Snake Crew for uh, stepping in today. Appreciate it, man, and uh, I'll look forward to having you back. All right, no problem. It's fun when I come out here with you and you, George, in here. It is a blast, and it is a loaded time. That's it, and we certainly thank, for, thank you for coming in, and this has been another BBSN production.